If you're carnivore or low carb and your fat loss has stalled, be honest. Is there a block of cheese with your name on it in the kitchen? Is heavy cream whispering sweet nothings to your morning coffee? Dairy is delicious, comforting, but biologically designed to grow mammals fast. That doesn't make it bad, but it does mean we should understand what is signaling in our bodies. Today we're asking a simple question with a complicated answer. On a keto or carnivore diet, is dairy a fat loss friend or an insulin spiker? And since you're here, tell me where you're watching from. And purely for scientific reasons, what's your favorite dairy indulgence? I'll go first. Cake can wait, but ice cream, that's another subject. And let me tell you why. I took my lovely wife on a date and it was with a chef. I think it was called Cozy Meal, where they show you how to prepare and cook food. But here's the thing. We decided before the date that we would have a day of indulgence. And one of the items to cook was a strawberry ice cream with a hint of mint. And let me tell you, I completely understand why people struggle with dairy. Because the moment it touched my mouth, I was in love. Now my wife takes the cake when it comes to love. But in that moment, the ice cream was a close second. And speaking of love, why is dairy so lovable in the first place? Mechanistically, milk is a growth package. The carb is lactose, glucose plus galactose, broken down by lactase. Most humans downregulate lactase after weaning, which is why so many adults get bloating and gas after a glass of milk. Some populations have evolved to become lactase persistent having genes that keep lactase on into adulthood because their ancestors herded animals and relied on milk. Think Northern Europe and certain pastoral groups in Africa and the Middle East. Many others, much of East Asia and indigenous Americas, have higher lactose intolerance. If a lottie bullies your belly, that might be genetics, not willpower. Now, even people who tolerate lactose often crave dairy. That's reward chemistry. Dairy stacks multiple layers at once. Fat for a mouthfeel, lactose for a gentle sweet, and protein, whey, and casein for powerful signals. Whey is fast absorbing and surprisingly insulinogenic. It can spike insulin even when carbs are low. Casein digests more slowly and can fragment into tiny peptides. Casomorphins that bind opiate receptors. I'm not saying chatter is heroin. I'm saying there's a subtle ah to the brain. Layer fat plus sugar plus salt plus cold creamy texture, hello ice cream. And you've engineered a palatability jackpot. You're not weak, you're human. Insulin is the pivot. On low carb, most meals keep insulin low and steady. Dairy can be the exception. Whey bumps insulin, like leucine lights up mTOR, the build and repair pathway. Fantastic after lifting when you want muscle, not so helpful at 9 p.m. when you want fat burn. Elevated insulin pushes energy toward storage and away from mobilizing fat. Over time, for sensitive folks, that looks like a scale that won't budge and a brain that thinks about cheese more than you'd like. Add IGF-1 to the mix, insulin-like growth factor can rise with dairy. In growing kids or in athletic recovery, a nudge can be useful. In an adult trying to reverse insulin resistance and burn stored fat, a constant growth signal may be counterproductive. Context matters. Are you metabolically flexible and training hard or early in your journey, insulin resistant and wrestling with cravings? Same food, different outcome. Gut and immune signals play a role too. If you're lactase deficient, undigested lactose becomes microbes fuel. Fermentation party leading to bloating, gas, reflux, and loose stools, even if lactose is fine. Aged cheeses can be high in histamine, which in susceptible people shows up as congestion, headaches, skin flares, or anxious restlessness. Some notice differences between A1 and A2 casein. Goat and sheep dairy tend to be A2. Evidence is mixed, but clinically I see better tolerance with A2 sources or by skipping the proteins altogether and using ghee, which removes lactose and most casein. So why do dairy and fat loss often clash? Four clinic tested reasons. Number one, hyperpalatability drives overeating. Pleasure override. 
Number two, ways insulin response may blunt fat mobilization even when carbs are low. Number three, liquid and semi-soft calories hide. A splash of cream becomes half a cup by day's end. And number four, cravings amplify. Dairy sometimes opens the door to just a little sweetener or just one keto treat and carb creep sneaks back in. Does that mean everyone must ditch dairy? Not at all. Test it like a scientist. Do 14 days dairy free while staying carnivore with meat, eggs, salt, and water. Use ghee for cooking if needed since it's nearly free of lactose and casein. Track morning weight. Waste. Fasting glucose if you have a meter. Hunger before meals on a 1 to 10 scale. Plus notes on cravings, congestion, skin, and sleep. After two clean weeks, reintroduce with a ladder. First start with ghee, then butter, then hard cheeses, then heavy cream, then plain unsweetened Greek yogurt, and finally whey protein. Add one rung every three to four days while tracking the same metrics. If the scale stalls, cravings roar, or symptoms return at a rung, you found your threshold. Practical rules to keep dairy in the friend zone. Use the least insulinogenic, least triggering forms. He is top tier. Basically butter fat without the proteins and sugar. Butter is next. Treat it like a condiment, not a food group. Hard aged cheeses typically have less lactose, but watch histamine. Heavy cream belongs in occasional category. Measure it, don't free pour. Greek yogurt should be plain and portioned. Milk is usually least friendly for fat loss due to lactose load. Ice cream, delicious, yes, lives in the rare treat category, like it was for me and my wife. In fact, as a carnivore, it had been years since I had ice cream before our date. And if you love whey for muscle, time it post-workout when your muscles are most insulin sensitive. You don't need three scoops, just enough to hit two to three grams of leucine for muscle protein synthesis, which many single scoops already reach. Outside that window, prioritize steak and eggs, same amino acids, less rapid insulin punch. But dairy is nutrient dense, you may say. True, calcium, some vitamin K2 in aged cheeses, iodine in certain dairies, and highly bioavailable protein. But you can cover those bases without dairy. Calcium from small bone in fish and mineral waters, K2 from egg yolks and animal fats, iodine from seafood or iodized salt. On carnivore or low carb, dairy is optional, not essential. Skin matters too. As insulin and IGF-1 rise, androgen signaling and sebum production can increase. That's one reason skim milk and whey show up in acne research. If you're here for eczema or acne, Removing dairy is often step one. If symptoms calm down, you've learned something about your biology. No pricey test required. A word on culture and compassion. If your background includes lower lactase persistence, your body isn't broken. It's adapted to your ancestors' plates. If you come from herding cultures, you might do fine with certain forms. Either way, your body votes every day. Our job is to listen. Here's your quick decision path. If fat loss is stalled, cravings are loud, or you've got congestion, acne, reflux, or bloat, pull dairy for 14 days. If things improve, bring back only ghee and butter. Still good? Test a measured portion of a hard cheese. Think ounces, not bricks. If cravings wake up or the scale pops, roll it back. If you're leaner and lifting, consider post-workout weight only. For most people chasing fat loss, keep dairy to about 10 to 15% of daily calories. Measure cream, and avoid late night dairy. Insulin and mTOR at bedtime are not on your fat burn team. Two lesser known nuggets before we land. If butter sits well but cheese doesn't, it's likely the proteins, not the fat. Ghee often solves that. And many tolerate goat and sheep dairy better than cow, possibly due to A2 casein and different fat globular structures. If you must experiment, start there instead of diving into a pint of ice cream. Around here, we don't demonize food. We diagnose patterns. On carnivore, the foundation is simple. Ruminant meats, eggs, salt water, sleep, sunlight, and sanity. Dairy can fit for some, but if it's acting like an insulin spiker in your life, there's no shame in showing at the door while your metabolism heals. So if this video helped, tap like and subscribe so more people can find answers. Drop a comment if you tried the 14-day dairy fast and re-intro ladder. I want to hear your results. Your metabolism is coachable. Your cravings aren't your character. And that ice cream, not your best friend. Unless it's a periodic indulgence. I'll see you in the next video.